Okay, we're looking at the last FRQ here on the BC exam. As usual, if there's any corrections, I'll put it in the description or uh, pin it as a comment. So function f is defined by this power series for all numbers. Using the ratio test, find the interval convergence for the power series of f. Justify your answer. Okay, so ratio test is you're doing the limit as n goes to infinity, and you're doing the the next when you put absolute values you can strip out the sign changing part right it's x of the and then this would be 2 n plus i'm oh, sorry 2 n plus 1 plus 1 over 2 n plus 1 plus 1 all of that over x of the 2 n plus 1 over 2 n plus 1 so you're doing kind of the um the ratio of that um when you're plugging n plus 1 and then dividing it by by just the n uh, with the, uh, the term without the n plus one, right? A of n plus one over a of n. So this is a of the two n plus three um, over two n plus um, what is that? Two plus one plus three times the reciprocal of this guy. And we want this to be less than one. So we kind of group things together. That's the easiest way I think about when you're doing a ratio test is think about the, the things that kind of go together. They look alike. So this and this, when I do the limit of that, that's going to be 1, right? And then this guy is going to simplify to just, um, you know, you just subtract the exponent x squared. So you have x squared is less than 1, so the x is between 1 and negative 1. Okay, so that's the interval. Um, we should check the endpoint because they want the interval of convergence. Um, we need to check the endpoints when we're finding intervals. So we need to check in with when x is equal to one, when it's equal to one. What does the series look like? It's just um, one to the two n plus one is just one. It's negative one to the n over two n plus one. Um, yeah, this is going to be one to infinity, I think. No, is it zero? Zero to infinity. And this one converges by the alternating series, converges by alternating series. And that's because if you do the limit of 1 over 2n plus 1 as n goes to infinity, that equals 0 because it's alternating. So we should put an equal sign there for that guy. But if you're looking at 0 to infinity, if I plug in negative 1, um, it's just going to cancel out with that guy. So it's just going to be 1 over 2n plus 1. And this one diverges because it's by limit comparison. I don't know if you're supposed to write all this. They should have asked you for the radius of convergence if you want the interval. So it, it basically, uh, by limit comparison to um, uh, 1 over n. And uh, it's not too hard to prove some of those things. But because they just say the ratio test, the, why, the problem is, is the endpoints, right? The endpoints, when it's at 1 and negative 1, to find the interval, I have to check the endpoints. So it's confusing that they ask you to use the ratio test to find the interval. I'm just going to do. Um, uh, I'm just going to do finding the interval the normal way, ignoring the test. You always use ratio test to find the general, the radius to find the general bounds, but the endpoints we've got to just check in specifically. And so at, at one, it, it converges, but at negative one, it diverges. Show that um, f of one half minus one half is less than one tenth. So this is about uh, alternating series error bound, right? This is the difference between the actual value here and here. Um, is less than one tenth. Well, actually, what is f? F is um, minus one half. Oh, interesting. So they just want you to look at the series when it's um, okay. Uh, kind of weird. So when you plug in one half, your series is going to look like this. So f of one half. Let me just kind of show you. It looks like n, n is zero to infinity of um, negative 1 to the n, 1 half to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1. So uh, I think we just showed that this converges. So this is an, the infinite series, right? Is defined by the power series. It goes forever. So this is an infinite series. It, it converges. So this converges. So because 1 half is between 1 and negative 1, right, this series converges. 
which means f of 1 half should equal like the exact value of the series i think well what let me see this is okay so what is this power series this is a sine of x let me just kind of just do it what's sine of x going to be um that you just kind of know so th this one was this is weird um what do they want you to show ultimately sine of one half is just some number so i don't think that's what they're asking you to do so they're asking you what that value minus one half is. Oh, oh, oh I, 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 I get, I get, I get, okay, I get it now. When you do f of one half, you're gonna plug in. It's gonna be one half minus all of this stuff. One half cubed over three plus one half to the fifth over five minus dot dot dot. And so when you subtract these. Like if you, you could subtract the one half to the other side, so you get one f of one half minus one half, that would equal the remaining terms. Does that make sense? Dot dot dot. They want to know what 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 is the bound on um, on that on, on this series right here. Right. So you want to approximate what this series is going to be. And then basically say that, like, you know, just stop at a certain number of terms, I guess. Um, but let's approximate that series. So if it comes down to it, what I want to do is I want to approximate this series here. I want to know what is this sum going to be? Negative 1 half cubed over 3 plus 1 half to the fifth over 5, right, etc. Like, what is that sum going to approach? So I can just add a few terms here. And I could say like, well, what like like for example, this first term right here, what is this going to be? It's going to be negative 1 over 24. And then this is going to be 1 over 32 times 5, um, which is um, 100 and 160, right? 1 over 160 minus dot 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 right so what i'm showing is that the difference between here and here is just these guys right here going on forever and you're saying this sum i know that what what is this sum is i could if i just stop at one term i could say well this guy here is about equal to that and this is the error bound on it for example so basically i know at this point that f of one half minus one half that 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 is approximately equal to negative 1 over 24 plus or minus 1 over 160 right like that that's what i know because because this series represents the difference between the two right because all i did was take this series i moved the one half over here so f of one half minus one half is this whole series here if that's the whole series then i know it's about equal to just sort of truncating the approximation I just approximate it as negative 1 over 24. And I know if I use negative 1 over 24 as my approximation, this guy is my error bound, right? So I know that like this number is between negative 1 over 24 plus 1 over 160 and negative 1 over 24 minus 1 over 160. Both of those numbers, if I take the absolute value, are less than 1 tenth. So I know that this sum has to be less than one tenth, or that this difference here. Okay, that was a weird way to do alternating series error bound. By the way, I thought that was very unusual. I it took me a minute to figure out what they were trying to get you to do. So write the first first four non-zero terms and the general term for an infinite series of f prime of x. Okay, so um, you just you just um, you just uh, take the derivative of this thing, right? So like. Um, let me just recopy it here so you can redo it down here just so I can kind of teach you and illustrate. So I do f prime of x, it's going to be 1 minus 3x squared over 3 plus 5x to the fifth over 5 minus um, 7x to the sixth over 7, right? Plus dot 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 negative 1 to the n, 2n plus 1x to the 2n over 2n plus 1. So all of these cancel, so you get 1 minus x squared plus x to the fifth. 
sorry, I don't know, it is, this is bx to the fourth. What am I doing? Sorry, I'm just flummoxed by that last part of the question. All right, minus x to the sixth. So that's the first four non-terms, and the general term is going to be this 2n plus 1 cancels, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n. Okay, so that's the general term there. And then use the result from part c to find the value of f prime of 1, 6. So f prime of 1, 6, um, uh, do they just want you to use the first four non-zero terms? I'm not entirely sure. The series that represents f prime of x. Oh, it's a geometric series. I see. This is a geometric. I've never seen them actually do a sum on geometric series. It's kind of interesting. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over 36, right? Negative 1 over 36, right? Um, so it's a geometric series. So to find an exact sum for it, I would say it's the first term over 1 minus uh, r, but r is negative 1 over 36. So that's 1 over 36 over 37 over 36. And so that is 36 over 37.